guys, Steve Olin coming to you with another sketch project. I'm gonna be working on a pencil sketch here today. Um, that's my easel behind me. I just figured out the other day, this is a fairly new easel. I would use it for my painting, but I just figured out the other day that I can lower it and uh, have it set up more like a draft table type uh, surface to sketch on because uh, I was kind of leaning over too much and getting some back pains <laughs> from from sketching. Uh, I can actually extend the legs and do that standing up as well. So um, anyway, I just completed a commission project yesterday and didn't record at all on that, but I'll give you a quick peek at it here before we get started on this one. Also wanted to go over some of the supplies that I'll be using on this one. Um, I do have a sketch pencil set there. It's a 12 piece set that ranges from 2H all the way to 8B. Um, I have some uh, erasers as a needable eraser, a rubber eraser. I have two mechanical erasers that are mono zero erasers. This one is the round one and then I have a rectangular one as well. Um, two mechanical pencils that uh, just came in today. I haven't used them yet, but I just got my hands on those. Uh, I do have a blending stump, a couple of them here that I'll use. Um, these are uh, white jelly roll pens that I use for a little bit of highlight now and then. Um, and these two things are what they call clutch pencils. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Am Andrew Tischler. Uh, he's got a really cool YouTube channel and I watch his videos frequently. Um, he recommended a, some dagger paintbrushes several times in his videos. So I purchased some of those and I was happy with that decision. So the other day I was watching some of his sketch work and saw him talking about a clutch pencil and I had never actually heard of a clutch pencil. so. I ordered a couple of them. These came in. Um, they're both 5B. I just got a discount for getting two of them, so I bought two. I can change the softness of lead in it to a different one. Um, and then once these came in, I actually ordered several more, which are in route and will be here eventually. I keep a sharpener handy. This is not the best, but it works well. And uh, sometimes using those softer leads, I have to sharpen quite regularly. Keep a good point. So I mentioned these white jelly roll pens. They came in a three pack and they're three different size tips. Um, the really fine one, I don't seem to be able to get it to flow real well. Um, but I had seen that in somebody else's YouTube video. I'm not even exactly sure now, but I've seen a couple people use them for highlights. And I'm gonna show you an example of a pencil sketch that I did and completed it with uh, you know, negative space, drawing facial hair, and letting some of the white paper show through to indicate whiter hair. Um, and then what it looks like after my pens came in and I went back and added highlights to that picture. It's uh, amazing how much it actually made the uh, realism pop on the facial hair and brought some depth to the sketch, so show you that real quick and then we'll get into our latest project. I just realized I didn't start the video recording right at the beginning, so I have laid in some of the basic sketch marks here for the outline of the head and then the facial features you know, with some of the heavier wrinkles using a harder lead. And now I'll go in with a softer lead, start laying in some darker tones in the wrinkles and features, and then work mainly with a blending stump to build the skin tone. And then come back to add some detail. I'm right-handed, so <laughs> this will definitely uh, create some challenges for you to be able to see. So let me try to reposition. This angle may work okay. We'll give it a shot and see how it goes.
The one concern I'm having here is that I made a mistake of starting on the right side. So I'm gonna have some uh, work to do to make sure that I am uh, properly avoiding smudging up the sketch as I move to the left. I typically try to start the other way around so I don't have those issues. And uh, today I didn't do that for whatever crazy reason. I just didn't do it right. So as you see, I've started the blending process. If you watch closely enough, I know it's in <laughs> high speed, but I use the blending stump to build up most of the skin tones just by moving the graphite from those heavier wrinkles and facial features um, to the areas where I need a little bit darker tones. Then I'll come back in and add some finer detail and texture to the skin in the following phase of the process. So one of the things that I spend a lot of time doing to try to create some realism on these uh, aged faces is these putting in some skin texture and finer details on the skin and I'll come back again and make some blotchy marks with the uh, blending stump and some other things but uh, you know working from a digital reference you can see all the big heavy wrinkles in the reference photo very easily and so you can uh, duplicate those but Nobody has big heavy wrinkles like that and it has smooth skin in between. So to really capture the realism, you have to come in and create some skin texture in addition to those heavy wrinkles. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on right now. It takes a long time. You got to keep at it and um, just look for opportunities to uh, create a little bit more realistic looking skin texture. Trying to get a zoomed in shot here for you to see some of the finer marks that I was referring to as far as the skin texture. You won't see these in a lot of the regular camera shots, but you can see those finer lines and marks drawn in to create some additional skin texture detail. Here I begin the same process on the neck area. There were no features really to sketch in, so to speak. Uh, so you can see I used the side of the lead and just basically started laying in graphite where I needed some darker tones. And then I'll use the same process with the blending stump to come in and finish out the neck area. And then I'll come back in with a pencil and put in some of the finer marks to build up the skin texture as I just mentioned, following the same process in the neck area as I did on the rest of the face. I wanted to add in some little sections of real-time footage. I know it adds time to the length of the video, but it really helps to see um, some of the real-time motion and not everything in a time lapse.
One thing I didn't mention earlier is coming back in with this Mono Zero eraser. You'll see me pick up in a second um, to add in some highlight areas. Then in my final step, I'll go to the gel pen. We are closing in on the end of this video, adding some final details to the uh, jewelry and the hair, um, as well as the background. And then here I'm using that gel pen to come in and add some white highlights, different spots on the face, as well as uh, quite a bit in the hair area. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel. We greatly appreciate it. Have a great day and stay home and stay safe.